and light itself is not more persistent than the stream of feminine discourse. Edwin Abbott, Flatland. Hello again, welcome back. Let's continue our journey with the valiant Hidalgo and his savvy squire. The story Rodriguez tells has three parts, her youth, the death of her husband, and the seduction of her daughter by the son of one of the Duke's vassals. Her narrative reviews the major themes of the novel. The North-South theme of ethnic and religious conflict reappears. We are in Aragon, and thanks to Thiriamete's Moorish intervention, we now return to the medieval holdout of Visigothic Christians in the far north. Like Ruy Díaz de Viedma in Don Quixote Part 1, Chapter 39, Rodríguez was born in the region of the Mountains of León, associated with the purest Spanish nobility. As she says, the Asturias of Oviedo, and from lineage. There also resurfaces the difficult transition from feudalism to early market capitalism found in Sancho's quest for a salary from Don Quixote. Rodríguez's parents took her to modern Madrid to do needlework as a maidservant to a principal lady. So she was a worker with enough skills to make money, but also a servant at the mercy of her mistress's generosity. I remained an orphan and dependent on the miserable salary and the meager favors that are typically given to such palace servants. The story of Rodriguez's marriage and the death of her husband contains picaresque themes. Her husband was a squire at the palace where she served, but she says he was also honorable, somewhat advanced in years, bearded and impressive, and above all, an Hidalgo as noble as the king, for he was from the mountainous region. As elsewhere in Don Quixote, this constant insistence on Christian purity makes us doubt it. Rodriguez carried on a secret love affair with this man, but when her mistress found out, she forced them to marry. The phrase Rodriguez uses here echoes the corrupt petitioner at Sancho's court. We tied the knot of peace before the Holy Mother Roman Catholic Church. Remember that in the case of the petitioner, the outward appearances of his son and Clara Perlelina were so grotesque that his claims of purity were ridiculous. Rodriguez's story here seems more realistic, less absurd, but is it really all that different? Did you know both Protestantism and Islam permit divorce? The death of Rodriguez's husband occurs after an eerie event in the streets of Madrid. Rodriguez erupts in tears, recalling the majesty with which her husband escorted her mistress on his mule. God help me, and with what majesty he carried my mistress on the haunches of a powerful mule. It's a tragic version of the violent mule that kicked the barber in the Mikomikon plot of Don Quixote Part 1, Chapter 29, as well as Dulcinea's shocking fall in Don Quixote Part 2, Chapter 10. Note also the hyperbolic emphasis on the color of the mount, as black as jet itself, Azabache. Readers of La Ferio de Tormes will recognize this as an allusion to race. Also present is the north-south conflict of medieval Spain, for the subsequent scene takes place on Santiago Street in Madrid, precisely at the Guadalajara Gate, an open-air marketplace frequented by picaros. Quixotic Mission To what does the color of the mount of Doña Rodriguez's husband allude? A. Justice B. Race C. Technology Correct answer, B. Race The abuse suffered by Rodriguez's husband highlights the hierarchical privilege that Cervantes always criticizes. The squire turns his mule toward a court magistrate as a sign of respect, but this angers his mistress, whom Rodriguez calls My Lady Doña Casilda, an allusion to Saint Casilda of Toledo, a medieval devotee of Saint Vincent of Zaragoza. Note the trajectory of the novel in this allusion. Doña Casilda's arrogance grows, as we saw recently with Sancho, until she attacks Rodriguez's husband. As poetic justice, she is then thrown from the mule. 
Full of collar and rage, she took a thick needle, I think it was a knitting pen, from its case, and she stabbed it into his back, which caused my husband to shout out and twist his body such that he knocked her grace to the ground. Rodriguez's husband seeks medical attention in the house of a barber, and Doña Casilda is forced to walk home. Remember when Sancho was forced to walk in Don Quixote Part 1? That's all for now. Join me next time as we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.